so, I mean, the video is going to be a little bit longer than my five to eight minute long goal per video, but it's because I'm trying to show you detail on this because I think every one of you can port your own cylinder heads. Hey guys, Dave from Nature's Glory Shopworks here, and on this episode, we're continuing our cheap 440 build. Uh, when I say cheap, I mean you're doing a lot of the work yourself, and a lot of guys take pride in it, a lot of guys don't have the time to it, so they send it to a machine shop, no big deal. Um, but As far as we're going, we're still working on cylinder heads. So, uh, I finished porting this one, and by porting, okay, I'm gonna run you through what I do, because I just wanna give you a little more in depth, try to make it a short video, we'll see what happens here. When you're talking cylinder heads, you have several things you gotta think about. There's many areas to a cylinder head, and every, every surface that you touch every outside inside external surface has a purpose so starting with i mean obviously you got your cylinder block to head mounting flange no brainer then you've got your head bolt holes again no brainer um then these extra holes all here they're for coolant passages so then you start to look and you're like oh okay so coolant runs all through the cylinder head, right behind the valves, right behind everything. You ever hear of somebody who is uh, porting ahead and they went too far? What they've done is they've ground into the water jacket and basically ruined the head without a whole bunch of uh, cast iron welding. Or if it's aluminum, you can get away with epoxies, but it's 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 never something that you would trust fully. So. Uh, getting long-winded here. So when you're porting cylinder heads, you have to keep in mind What your goals are? So I've opened these up. You saw me use the paint on them and the gasket I open them up to match the size of the gasket. That's as big as I'm going I'm not doing any crazy race gaskets or anything like that and then from there I blended and That's about the best I can say is I blended I look at a cylinder head and I don't think of airflow so much as just flow, like water flow, fluid flow. How would fluid flow more readily out of there? So we take right here is our exhaust port. Now I already did start it and then I thought I'd give you guys a view of it. Um, when you look in here, you've got all this extra area right here and that extra area shrouds the valve if you ever heard of somebody saying that they're going to unshroud the valves they're opening up this area underneath the valve seat so same thing on the intake side this is super thick here and it doesn't have to be this is super thick on the exhaust side it doesn't have to be when when the exhaust is coming out you want a nice simple uh smooth passageway out now, if we look at it, it goes in and then it hits a lump, basically. Like there's a lump right there and it takes a sharp turn and then another nine, then a 90 degree. And same thing over here. This was tight and sharp and it, it was bad for flow. It, it necked in. Now on the intake side, same thing. We have to take away some of this metal. You see here, I've taken away uh, probably a third of the metal. I don't want to take it all away because there is inherent strength for the valve seat area. But over here, this, I hope you can see it. This is lumpy and it curves in deep. Go on to this side and now it's smooth with a gentle curve in. And the gentle curve is going into the port. So what I'm going to do to illustrate this better, I'm going to paint these two holes, the intake and exhaust, and then I'm going to show you what tools I use. So simple and easy. We're not worried about getting paint where it don't belong because we're grinding it off. The heads are going to be cleaned again. We're not freaking worried. Now the paint's not even going to stick that well. This is just purely for illustration purposes. So here are some of the tools guys will use for uh, porting cylinder heads. Now there's a variety, these are only a sample. So you've got your typical cutting stones, they come in coarse, medium, fine, you know. Um, then you've got your flap discs, this is sandpaper flappers. 
that's a used one up you know and then you've got your die grinders <clears throat> some guys use electric die grinders some guys use dremels i use air um, i use a long carbide bit i touched on that earlier and this one's good for steel uh, cast iron and i don't use these i don't use them I stick with the burr bit to basically shape my ports and then I go in and I polish my exhaust ports with this. Now this is literally, it looks like a bolt, it is a bolt, it's a quarter inch bolt shank to fit inside my die grinder and I cut down um, very crudely but I cut down uh, so far a groove into it and I stick my uh, uh, sandpaper in it. Now you can get the sandpaper cloth medium coarse fine whatever or you can actually buy the uh this is 120 grit it's not bad coarser is good if you want to rough things up a little bit more like i like to leave my intake ports rough for fuel atomization um but uh, essentially those are my two tools those are my go-to's right there i just happen to have two die grinders you don't need to have two die grinders but one you know you got to swap it and swap it and swap it all right so we're just about ready um, what I'm going to do is I'll grind a little bit and then I'll bring in for close-up. I'll grind a little bit, bring in for close-up, so on and so forth. It'll give you an idea of the progression of what I'm trying to do. And like I said, we're just trying to make smooth transition and open up the back side of the valve. Nothing crazy. This is not, you know, crazy performance stuff or anything like that. And I do make mistakes. I've nicked a couple of my valve seats. you got to bear that in mind. Um, as of this point, I don't know if they're going to actually polish out when I grind in the valves, when I lap them in, but we'll find that out together. Okay, so you can kind of see when you run the die grinder bit over it roughly, this is sort of what you're left with. There's a bunch of little dips and valleys everywhere. Um, down in here, you see this uh, um, straight line along the port. And on this side, a straight line. That's the parting line. That's the uh, two halves of the casting when they were poured. And I don't like ever seeing that. It's got to go. So on the exhaust side, you see this shiny metal right here. And then this shiny metal here, that was the length of my bit going at an angle to contact. Now this whole area has to be blended. This whole area has to go. So I'm not going to make it completely disappear, but I'm going to make a smooth transition like that is a heck of a lip. And that's a shrouded area of the valve and that inhibits flow. Over here, we're not bad. Um, we got a little lump right here and then over here move that so you can kind of see it's a little lumpy here we got our parting line to get rid of the little lumpy here like this area is shrouded same thing over here this lump gotta go and the parting line I'm gonna blend the parting line in I'm gonna raise this level just a bit, nothing crazy, like over here, I came in and I just radiused it is really what I did. Now this one, that's long and that covers a lot of that exhaust valve. So that's gotta go, you see this one, it's still long, but now, now it's actually got a good curve on it. And we still have to go in and polish those later too. Like on the exhaust side here, we polish these guys like they're still rough. I'm not going crazy with this. If I was going crazy, I'd spend a week on each cylinder head. I'm talking about 10 minutes per bowl, maybe, maybe 15. But you can see it's all blended. It's all smooth now, smooth radius. And I had to grind in here because these channels were not nice, especially on the intake side. But now, Now they look pretty darn good. Decently smooth, smooth transitional areas, and we're happy.
and that's it that's the basics of porting so I'll get these ported out and then we'll come back Okay, so coming in, you can see on this side now, the lump is gone. Okay, it's a nice smooth transition. It's not perfectly gone. It's not a straight shot. We don't mind a little bit of curvature. Curvature is good for airflow. Too much curvature obviously causes turbulence. Now I've blended the lump out here. I've got a tiny bit more to take out. Right down here by the valve, all I'm going to do is smooth it. That's it, just smooth it. Over here, you can see we pretty much got our casting line gone. We're happy with that. Uh, we made these a smooth radius. Now, taking the die grinder and going in, it's the perfect width to just cut on in there and rip it right down. You'll know you'll get a nice even passage. And same thing, you just curve down along here, curve down along this side, and then blend the two in the middle. I roll over this guy just to relieve some of the roughness. And I go down basically as far as my die grinder will reach comfortably without banging on the head and everything. Same thing up here. So I still have to cut back on the underside here and blend this. You see it kind of shadows right here. Well, we got to blend that a little bit and then radius this some too. So we're almost done this one. It's not taking piles of time. We're almost done. Okay, here goes. All right, so that's done. Smooth, everywhere as it needs to be smooth. I cleaned up down here, the hump is gone. It's radius. it feels good when I run my finger on it. That's your other telltale, is when you can run your finger around it, you don't find any lumps, like right here, boom, lump. That's a sharp lump, right? Like I can't even get right there. It's just a sharp 90 degree, and we don't want that. We want a smooth, curved transition this is a hefty lip around like this shrouds that exhaust valve so horribly i know mopars like a little more exhaust lift and duration on their camshaft selection but i mean that's basically why they're trying to improve the flow on otherwise a sort of crappy design to be honest all right so i've still got a little lip right here a little 90 degree lip i have to bevel out this side is almost smoothly transitioned. I gotta blend it down just a touch more along here and just, just radius it, that's all, just radius it. Now if you look right there, we still have some original casting pock marks. And same with and same with right here. And we just want to lower this lip a little bit. It's not that detrimental because it's right at the back end of the valve. We're not worried about it. But we got to curve this down, get rid of him. We got to just blend this a little more. Hope you can see that. We just got to blend this a little more, blend it down here to a smooth transition. And right here a little bit more. But like I said, we're almost done. This is going quite well. Exhaust side is done. Uh, I've got this smoothed out now. This is smoothed down, radiused a bit. 
this area is no longer a, a shelf. This moves nice and smoothly, happy. So now I'm just gonna move on to uh, using my, my flapper wheel. All right guys, that's her. You can see that it just smoothed out. Compared to this guy, he's a little bit rough still, but this one you can see the nice smooth transitions. That looks really good. I mean, I'm quite happy with that. Again, it's not performance so much as efficiency and smooth transition. That's what I keep on barking, a smooth transition. Hang on a sec here. And to be honest, I have left a fair bit of material in there. I just smoothed out the passage to promote better airflow. Um, now, having said that, I'm all done torturing you guys with porting cylinder heads. There's a ton more I can do on these heads and I'm, I'm not doing it. I'm holding my goal, which is eventually I'm putting aluminum heads on this, which I will probably port out as well. Um, not, gonna try and afford CNC ported and all that jazz no thank you I'll do it myself two reasons why I'm not going hog wild three one this is a cheap 440 build we're trying to do efficiency and smart practices two lost my train of thought uh, two is I don't have a flow bench so I don't have anything to quantify that I'm going in the right direction. If I go hog wild on this thing, I can actually hurt the flow more so, weaken the casting, make it just unlivable and fail. I can have coolant crack through into the into the combustion chamber or into oil chamber, either way, it's a bad thing. And three, I can't remember. But suffice to say, we'll stay with those two is affordability and time and longevity and we don't know how to quantify our results I could build a flow bench there are books on building flow benches and plans and stuff with somewhat basic tools but we're not going down that road this is all I want to do to this head is just promote smooth transition to increase some efficiency that's it we're happy, we're done. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. And as always, I've enjoyed making it. And leave a comment. Let me know if you think I'm an idiot or if I'm going in the right direction. But either way, let's uh, keep this train rolling and see us next time on, I think, part 10, where hopefully I'll have the uh, rotating assembly back from the machine shop and we can keep on trucking on this. All right, guys, thanks very much. Please like, subscribe, and share. We'll see you in the next video.